that gets us to community. Because <laughs> I don't know about you, but I listen to so much talk about Metaverse, and this is the part that kind of people gloss over, and it's the part that in Decentraland has become one of the key reasons that I and other artists want to work in that environment. So, inspired by people like Tang Poco, who built an environment called the Dollhouse in Decentraland, which builds community. People go there every week to talk, to connect, to start creating things together. Here's another party with Tampoco. Here's uh, Voxels. So I don't know if you saw, actually, the first photo was a spatial Decentraland crossover. This is from Voxels. It's by a guy called Rizzle. And Rizzle does something called the WIP project every week. Um, he gets people to come together in voxels, and it's this really vibrant community, again, of builders that are trying to challenge what metaverse is and what we can achieve. But the problem that we have is that Web2 socials are basically fragmented silos. There's no two ways about it. Um, I was trying to tot up how many decisions I had to make in terms of sharing these events and starting to community build. And I found kind of 10 platforms I had to get used to. So in Discord, you have general chat, then you have events, then you have voice chat, then you have organized live stream events with a separate voice chat, and maybe even a chat going on down the side as well, which disappears after the event. You can't get it back. Then you've got in Decentraland chat, which is a text chat, and you've got voice chat in Decentraland, and you've got debate on the forum. None of that is integrated. Then you also have Twitter. So you have Twitter, Twitter spaces, and something called Moments, which I haven't even used yet. Anyone used Moments? No, okay. That's before you get to Twitch, TikTok, Instagram, Xband, YouTube. Um, there are a few <laughs> kind of crazy people out there trying to build these integrated experiences. So this is an Indonesian dev team called Parallax Networks, and they're building integrated stuff on Orbis. This is an NFT metaverse that you can then integrate with Web3 social chat. So one of the reasons I want to work with Orbis, <laughs> so wish me luck tomorrow. But we couldn't use all of that. It was too early. So we looked at what worked from previous events that we'd done together. And this is from an exhibition called Showcase that we did in Decentraland in a gallery called Orica Gallery. Um, and we found that Twitter was the best for us in terms of connecting with community, in terms of having conversation. So what we did is we incentivized that conversation. We created an NFT of images of people in the space. And then we said to community, we will give you that NFT if you can help us with those images, if you share those images, kind of this virtual cycle of sharing. And then we'll talk to you and start chatting with you on these social networks. And so this is what we got. <laughs> There's too many. <laughs> but that brings me to my fourth and final point. As metaverse creators, we can get so dragged into the technology and the building aspect that we forget about the human beings that are going to enter our spaces and start interacting with them. And from my point of view, this is one of the key ones that isn't talked about just yet, but is there. This is a really great build. This is Proxy Maxi, which is probably the one that was voted as the best build in terms of Metaverse Art Week last month. It's by Vince Vargas, Thomas Wright, and Will Kane. And you can see it's an interactive um, exhibition that moves with my avatar. And then we enter this bit and see my arrow. So you enter it, and then it says this. This scene is enforcing the camera view. And it turns from being a 3D interactive experience that I'm watching with my avatar to kind of being this passive audience experience that I'm just watching something happen on a screen. And you can dive into the socials and see, is that just me? Or are other people having the same experience? And yeah, look, this guy, Nash, this is his sharing of the event, doesn't show the bit inside. This is DJ Tracks, a big presence in Decentraland right now, doesn't show the bit inside. And this is Peanut Butter, who's actually one of DCL's guys, goes in and cuts to something else. So the bit inside doesn't work, and I would argue that it's because we're not thinking about that engagement with the avatar. And for a lot of us who have started to move into the metaverse space, what we are in that space 
is as important to the environment that we're in, and we want to record that as well. So we found in Metaverse Art Week that the people in our space were creating their own art with the interaction of what they were wearing, the NFTs that they've collected, because all these wearables in Decentraland are NFTs on the Polygon network. So this is Jason, Jason Summers, wearing an NFT of a body paint by Ruth Stan, who's an American artist that's creating wearables again in Decentraland. So he's created this photo by putting his wearable inside our art. And that as an artist is incredibly attractive. It's like, whoa, there's like this meta layer of art that can happen now in the metaverse. So this is fancy dressing for the environment. Peebles sharing this work that becomes new forms of expression that if you're having, if you're enforcing that first person viewpoint, you're just not experiencing at all. And I just wanted to share some messing around on pyramids with some of the community. And you can see some of the creative expression that's coming through from basically NFT collectors starting to put together different NFTs by the creators that they're following to create experiences in how they present themselves in the metaverse. So yeah, that, that kind of brings us to the end of what I wanted to share with you today. We've got the four laws for metaverse creators. NFTs die in frames, but you can resurrect them through great curation. We've got exploration is everything. It's a showroom if it's not social. And see everything as a selfie. Don't enforce that first person point of view. This is a kind of community image to end with because there's so many people I wanted to thank and a lot of them are in this image right here. If this has been interesting to you, I have put all these slides on welter.com. If you go there, there's a big kind of link, text link that says, download these slides. And you can email me and the team of welter at bay at welter.com. So thank you so much and any questions? <laughs>